So our presentation today, and Mike, you can go ahead and take the take the screen whenever you're ready. Presentation today is by Mike Stagg, and he's he's from the trust. He's going to talk about the uh, trust aquatic program. But first, Steve, did you want to give any, any kind of an introduction? Yeah, thank you, Jason. I just wanted to first of all express appreciation to all of those who are on this call. Uh, this is a very very important subject that we're talking about today. And we're excited to have the Trust Aquatics program now in-house at the Trust. This is a more robust program than we've done in the past. It's still based on the Red Cross. Mike will talk about that. And Mike actually, uh, I've asked Mike to lead out on this program and to be in charge of this for the Trust. And, uh, and I appreciate the leadership that he brings to the table on this. We're excited to work close with you uh, in a more efficient way in a uh, more effective way to make sure that uh, your pools are safe. And Mike, if you wouldn't mind, take a minute to just share your background before you get started on this uh, and, and go from there. And maybe you're gonna cover that in your presentation, but take just a minute in terms of your background. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so thanks Steve for that, uh, that introduction. Most of you know me, um, or at least most of you um, I've worked with in the past, um, but so I'm, I'm new here to this position here at the Trust, been here for um, just about six months-ish. Um, but my background, as, as many of you know, is as, a, as an aquatics administrator. Um, I, I you know, started as a 15-year-old lifeguard. What program is uh, this? Uh, is worked that, my, uh, it's a, I don't know, Zoom? Maybe? How did you get to this? Show me. Okay, Jason, are you on a, a thing for Zoom? Jason, can you clicked on that? Jason, can you go ahead and mute folks just while we're going through? Go ahead, Mike. I muted everybody, Mike. If you want to unmute, there, um, we had some folks come in on uh, over top of us. Yep. Go ahead, Mike. Mike, you need to unmute. Mike. Mike okay, there we go. Sorry. This is my first Zoom call. No, I'm just kidding. It's not. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, I mean, but like I said, many of you know me already, but my background is in aquatics management um, as an aquatics professional. Um, so started as a 15 year old lifeguard, worked up since then. Um, and most recently before coming here to the trust, I did work for the American Red Cross and was, and was instrumental in working with, with the trust and getting all of you set up with the American Red Cross Aquatic Examiner Service Program. Um, so, you know, I, I, had a, I had a firsthand in training those individuals and, and building out that program um, with my background as a lifeguard instructor and as a lifeguard instructor trainer um, with the Red Cross and as a water safety instructor and water safety instructor trainer. Um, we felt it was a great opportunity for us to bring this, this program um, in-house and, and really take the best of what the Red Cross Aquatic Examiner Service had and combine it with um, some other things that, that we do really, really well here at the Trust and give you a, a great and robust program that is going to meet, hopefully, all the needs that you guys have and really make it personal for, for each member of the Trust. And so we're really super excited to, to bring this to you and, and to offer it. Um, and in addition to this, Mike, I'm just gonna add that Mike is also managing our Training Network Now digital platform, as well as our Cantola pilot program. And so if you haven't talked to Mike about those programs, please do. Thank you. Go ahead, Mike. Yes. Okay. Um, so, our goals here of the program. Um, so we've really got five goals that we're, that we're building on. Um, the first is to ensure the MEC uh, model aquatic health code compliance. Um, I know that the state of Utah hasn't fully adopted the MEC yet um, that has been put out by the CDC, but I think that's the, the direction they're probably going. Um, as we see more states in and around us um, start to adopt the MEC, like you know, the state of New Mexico um, has fully adopted the MEC. Um, Nevada is looking at it. Colorado is looking at it. Um, California is starting to adopt the MAC in certain situations. I, I, I think it's probably only a matter of time before it comes here to us as well. 
So we want to make sure that that we're also compliant um, with, with the Mac. So when that does come down, everyone's ready and all our pools are ready. Um, the second is to ensure consistency between each member and each member facility. Um, third is to increase aquatic safety for all the, all the members, so everybody here. Um, next is to increase lifeguard abilities and skills. And the last is to increase accountability for the members and for us as the trust. I'm um, in providing this program to you and any, anything that we have that, that, that we have with this moving forward. So your, um, your trust aquatic program staff is myself. Um, and there, there you can see just a little bit about me, you know, 23 years of aquatic experience makes me feel old. Um, but so I've got, and you know, my, my certifications with the Red Cross. And then we have our loss prevention team who we also have on here on the call. Um, Doug Folsom, Brent Okeson, and Jason Watterson. Uh, many of you have, have been able to uh, rub shoulders with, with these gentlemen in the past. They bring such a great wealth of experience and expertise as it, as it relates to, to a lot of what we're going to do here. Um, and not having them part of this program seemed, seemed like something we didn't want to do. So bringing them in and working hand in hand with me as we go out and deliver this program to you is really going to make it so we have a great robust program for you. And so we're really excited to, to partner with our loss prevention department and uh, bringing this out to you. So our first part um, of this program is our, is our MAC compliance portion of the program. What we're going to do is we're going to use a, a form that anyone can download. I mean, you can look at it, you can see what it's all gonna be. And it's, it's, it's an iPad only app um, though. You can't download it on a phone or something like that, but you can download it on an iPad. Um, and it's called the Aquatic Inspector app and it's, and it's put out by the, by the CDC. Um, and what this app will do is it will list each of the different things that we're going to look at as we come into your facility. Um, it'll, it'll show exactly you know, what, what those are and it will also reference the, the specific MAC codes that each of these things are referring to. So that if you have questions on what exactly we're looking at, um, we're able to tell you exactly it, what, what it's based on and why we're looking at those things. Um, this form is very, very simple. We're looking at areas like your pool deck and, and around your pool area. Um, we will need access to your pump room and we will look at chemical, chemical readings and things like that because that's what the MAC looks at. Um, we want to be sure that we're covering everything th that the MAC would look at um, if Utah does fully decide to, uh, to adopt this code. And so we wanna make sure that we're covering all those bases for you. Um, and as we go through and, and do, this, do this check, we're able to you know, mark, in compliance, out of compliance, not observed, not applicable. You know, so it, it is very personable and it relates directly to your facility. This isn't a one size fits all thing. I mean, if your facility doesn't offer whatever it is on here, it's not applicable or it's not observed. Um, and so we're very, and we're comfortable with, with saying that with your facilities. Afterwards, when we're finished with our reports, you will get reports that look much like this. Um, it will list, you know, the, the different scores that you guys have. It will list whether you're in compliance or out of compliance. Each of the different, uh, each of the different sections has a score that's given to it. And then you're given a final score at the end. We're also able to take pictures and post those with your report that you will get and show you exactly what was out of compliance related to the specific items on the MEC. And so we're really excited about using this tool with you. And I do encourage you, if you have an iPad, um, to go and download this and check it out. Um, see what it's all about, see what we're looking at. I mean, none of this is secret, right? This isn't what this program is all about. This program isn't about secrecy and it's about, about us trying to audit. Um, many of you know me, I don't like to use that word audit um, because that connotates we're trying to come in and catch you doing something wrong. And that is not what this program is about. This program is all about education um, and helping us be better, right? And helping you know, your facility be the safest it can be. And so we, all, so we know that your lifeguards, when they're in their lifeguard chair, that they're always in the best position they can be in to respond. They have the equipment available, that they know where that equipment's at, that the deck is safe, that your pump rooms are safe for your mechanical workers going in there and, and dealing with the chemicals and things like that. We want to be sure that all of that is taken care of with you. And we start with MAC compliance by making sure that's done. 
Okay, so our second goal is cons consistency between each member facility. Um, you will always have a consistent inspector. So whether that's myself or one of your dedicated loss prevention specialists, either Jason, Brent, or Doug, it's gonna be one of us four, right? That will come in, that will be coming to do your, your individual inspections. And when we come, it will always be that person. So if you have Mike, you will always have Mike. Or if you have Doug, you will always have Doug. Um, and that helps with the consistency between each of our facilities, right? Because we don't want this, you know, a different inspector coming in, looking at something different without any prior knowledge as to what's been going on at this facility or what has maybe been changed or what has been done better. And so we want to make sure that each of these is consistent. Um, we also will have consistent training. So I'm going to be in charge of training everybody and training our loss prevention staff. Um, I'm going to train them and we have been trained on how to utilize this MAC inspection form and how to conduct our lifeguard skills test. Um, Mike, myself, and each of the different loss prevention uh, members have all completed the NEHA pool inspection training program, um, which is really, really nice. It's a very robust program. Um, it's something that, that we've all gone through that helps us know what we're look to, to look for when we're utilizing this MAC sheet. Um, so we're excited to, to bring that, that aspect to you. The, the training is all very specific for us. It's specific to the state of Utah. And we're excited about that because I know that that was a pain point in the past that we were, you know, we were having inspectors come in from Texas or from California or from, um, or from, you know, New York or wherever that we were having people in our facilities that didn't know things about Utah or our specific laws or our specific um, ordinances and things like that, that we have here that they don't have there, or they had more restrictions than we have here, you know, or whatever it was. And we wanted to be sure that we're having consistent training with consistent inspectors when we're coming into your facility so that you know what to expect. Like I said, nothing is a surprise here. Everything's out in the open and that's how we want it to be. Um, we'll also have consistent report reviews. So all, review, all reporting that, that you know, Jason does or Brent does or Doug does, everything that they do will come back to me. I will review those reports. And then I will distribute those reports to you so you can see exactly what's going on. And I'll cover that here in just a minute on what our process is going to look like. But just know that we're going to, yeah. Uh, if I could just uh, interrupt for just one second, we do we have a question here that I'll get to, but um, we're seeing your presenter uh, screen now. If you could switch switch screens so we can see oh, just the presentation. Um, just uh, the question that we had come in is: Is it possible to see an inspection report uh, as a file or maybe via email um, if they don't have an iPad um, to to take a look at that? Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I can send that out for sure. If there's somebody that, that would like that, um, I can I can for sure send that out. We can just uh, we can just send that out to everybody who signed up for the, yep. for the webinar today. Absolutely, that's better. <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> um, okay, so our third goal is to increase aquatic safety and lifeguard skills and abilities. Um, just for your guys's information, um, so for for those of you who may not know, every year the Utah Recreation and Parks Association they hold the lifeguard games. And, and during this games, the lifeguards from across the state are tested in different lifeguard abilities. Um, and every year since the trust has started, and, and you guys as, as, as the members of, of the trust, have started to participate in the Red Cross's Aquatic Examiner Service. Every year since that has started, a trust member has won that competition, which is really, really cool. And so that really speaks to the, what you guys have done and gone through in order to prepare your lifeguards. And we want that to continue. Um, and so we are going to continue to utilize lifeguard skill checks and they will be, they will continue to be based on the American Red Cross lifeguarding standards. Um, if for some reason your facility switches um, from using American Red Cross lifeguards to another, um, to another provider, um, you know, a Star Guard, uh, Ellis and Associates, you know, whatever it is they, they decide to switch to. At that point, we will look at at a personalized lifeguard skill check for your specific facility. But as it stands right now, we're going to use the Red Cross lifeguarding standards. Um, and the, the different lifeguard skills and abilities that we're going to go over, um, we're going to look at a lifeguard response time test. 
We're also going to look at active rescues, passive rescues, CPR, spinal injury management, and record keeping. Um, those of you who have been to Lifeguard Games, this is a this is a exact score sheet of what we're going to use when we're coming in to do our Lifeguard skills checks at your facilities. Looks a lot like the Lifeguard Games sheet um, because that sheet is very, very well done and, and laid out very, very well. Um, and we're going to do the exact same thing with you. Um, tells you exactly what the skills are, how many points are possible, um, and what skills we consider to be critical skills as lifeguards. <clears throat> um, for the record keeping portion, so this is something that we're going to add in, which, I, which we think here at the trust is very, very important. Um, and this is something that I've heard a lot of feedback on from, from you as our members. As I was working with the Red Cross and things like that, what you guys wanted to see in this kind of a program. So we wanted to bring this to you. Um, and that was about documentation. What documentation you think you need? Um, and so what we're going to do is if this skill is, is chosen for you as your, as your skill for your skill check, you're going to just send that documentation to me. I mean, no longer are we gonna come in and want to see like your whole lifeguard handbook and um, want to see everything in there, you know, all your, you know, all your procedures and stuff. We're not gonna, we're not gonna look and check that when we come on site every time like the old Red Cross exam AES program was. We're just gonna have you send that to me and I'm just gonna look at it and let you and give you same thing. You'll have a score sheet and you'll be scored on each of the different um, aspects in this in your record keeping book. Um, and so we're excited about that and bringing that to you um, because we know that that is such a huge part of what we do as aquatic professionals is record keeping. So um, also as part of some, some feedback that we got from participation in the aquatic examiner service. Um, there, was, there was consistent feedback from, from you guys as our members that the language that was used in that program as it pertains to lifeguard skills and abilities, be it pass and fail, um, wasn't very informative. It didn't really say what was going on or how, how, you're, how you can improve. Um, and so what we've decided to do is we've decided to actually change that up a little bit. Um, so what we're gonna have are, are three different grading or scoring criteria on each of your lifeguard skills. Um, and that's going to be passed to the standard, which means that your skill is 100% correct. There's nothing better that that lifeguard or that group of lifeguards could do in order to make that skill perfect. So that is a perfect skill, 100% passed, done. The next one is a pass to the objective. This means that the lifeguard skill has been done to the, whatever the objective of that skill is. There may be aspects of that skill that still need to be perfected and need to be done better. And those will be noted on your score sheet but it's passed. You've done the skill. Your lifeguards are confident in their ability to perform that skill to the objective of whatever that skill is. And the last one would be do not meet the objective, right? This is something where the lifeguard does something or performs a skill in a way that is either unsafe for them or unsafe for the person that they're rescuing. And we feel that this is very, very important that we, that we make these different distinctions. Because as most of you know, who are lifeguard instructors, when we teach a lifeguarding class, right? We teach to the standard, we teach how exactly it should be done, and we test everyone to whatever the objective of that skill is. And that's what we want to um, get across here as well, is that we're going to teach and train you to be the standard, but we're going to test you to the objective of the skill. But we want you to get to the standard. We want you to get to that 100%. Um, and so with our grading sheets and our score sheets th that you'll have, when you get your scores back, you'll be able to see exactly what you need to work on in order to make your staff get to the standard. Um, and now our, our, our uh, fourth is our increased accountability. So how this is, how, how our process is going to work is we're going to have a, a report review uh, which means Doug or Jason or Brent or myself has gone out and we've conducted your on-site visit. We've done our skills checks. Those reports then come back to me and I'm going to review each of those different reports, um, ensure, ensure that everything has, has been done accurately and done completely. 
And then within one week of time, what I'm going to do is I'm going to schedule a meeting. So a virtual meeting um, with a member uh, with the aquatic contact. Um, so the aquatic coordinator, the, the aquatic supervisor, um, whomever, to talk about the, the results of the and see you know, what went on. Um, and then we're going to come up with an action plan on what we can do in order to make these deficiencies, if there's any, make them better. And what we can do, you know, what kind of training might we think about? What kind of in-services might we think about? Um, where might I suggest we go in order to get you to that standard? And then we're going to follow these prescribed timelines here. What we've done is in the MAC form and in the lifeguard skills form, there are skills that we that the MAC has decided are critical skills and that us here at uh, the Trust and, and the Red Cross standards consider to be lifeguard skills critical. So any of those skills, like a MAC critical skill, is a skill that a health department could come in and shut you down for. So if your health department would come in and you have failed a MAC critical skill, they could come in and shut you down. And we don't want that. We want to avoid that. Um, a lifeguard skills critical is a skill that would cause the skill to not meet that objective. Okay. So, so think about something like not activating an EAP. That's a critical skill for a lifeguard, right? Um, versus a non-critical skill for a MAC, which is which are things that a health department wouldn't come and shut you down for, but something that you would want to make sure that you get corrected and fixed. Um, same thing with a lifeguard skills, non-critical. These are things that are not affecting the objective of the skill, but they are affecting meeting the skill to the standard. And Mike, what would be an example of a, of a MAC critical item that, that they would be shut down for? So for example, a MAC critical item would be, um, I'm just trying to think on our sheet that what we had. Um, I think one was a, a, a lane line or a, a line in the pool that delineates your shallow end from your deep end or where water is changing depth. That's a MAC critical skill. Um, and, if, if that's not present. Mm -hmm. And I, I was thinking other things like, uh, like chemistry out of balance, pH out and things mm -hmm. like that, that would, and chlorine, those types of things. Just, just so yeah. they have an example. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Thanks. No, thank you. That's great. And Mike, um, I'd just, I'd just be curious. What questions are people having or, or, uh, that uh, are out there? Maybe you can just ask those periodically. Oh yeah. Just open the mic. You know, there are a lot of great minds on this call right now, and we'd love to hear questions or observations. Absolutely. Yeah, so um, yeah, let's go ahead and do that right now, actually, Steve. That's a great idea. Jason, um, Brent, Doug, whoever's monitoring the chat, do we have any questions coming in? Jason, you're you're muted, Jason. You're muted, Jason. And, and even if people want to open their mics and just uh, take an open mic session for a minute, the chat yeah. or open mic. Yeah, we don't have anybody on the on the chat box right now, but you can just simply type those questions in there or open your mic and ask a ask question now. Doug and Brent, do you have anything that you uh, wanted to ask? Not at this time, no. Great job, Mike. Mike, how long how long will these uh, inspections take, and and what what can a, one of our members expect from the new program using the MAC and whatnot? Yeah, that's a really good question. Um, so each of these inspections should take no longer than an hour and a half to two hours. Um, very easy, very simple process for you um, as as a, as a pool operator um, to, to make sure we get these done. I mean, it's not gonna be a four hour, five hour process like it was before with the Red Cross program. Um, hour and a half to two hours and we're done. Um, we want to make this as easy and simple as you, for, as easy and simple as possible for you, um, as well as we're not gonna make it, we don't wanna make an impact on your operations. So we're not gonna be pulling lifeguards off of stands. We're not gonna be shutting down areas of your pool. Um, and we're going to, we're just going to make sure that before we come, that we have all these logistics worked out with you. And I'll talk to you just in a, in a minute about, you know, the logistics of this and how it'll, how it'll look as we're coming into your facility. So Mike, we've, um, you're probably going to talk about this in a minute, but there is a question about how many times in a season uh, will uh, the aquatic uh, operators be visited? 
Yeah, I am. I am going to talk about that, but that's a good question. Um, and so, so what, what we're going to do is we're actually going to divide, we've divided up the, the membership of, of, of our members with pools into different tiers. And each of those tiers is just based on um, the, uh, the construction of your facilities, right? Whether you're an indoor facility that's year round, whether you're an indoor facility with an outdoor component to your facility, um, or if you're just an outdoor only facility. Um, and then depending on what kind of facility your, your city falls into, that's, that will determine how many times we're going to visit. Um, and so, but I'll go through that here in just a second. Um, so that's a great question, but keep that in mind as we go through here. And Mike, I'm assuming that I know you know you'll talk about this, but those will be minimum visits. And if there are other things that are needed along the way, we can also accommodate some of those things as well. Yes, absolutely. And that's what's nice, Steve. Thank you for mentioning that. Is about this program because we're running it in house here, we're able to do that. We're able to do that for you as our members um, for things that you want and need. We are we are able to do that for you, um, and we're able to build things around your, your specific facility, which is very very nice. Mike, one thing that just came in, uh, any repercussions to facilities that consistently fail? And I know you'll talk about how that process is going to work. And so anyway, just keep that in mind as, as you're going mm -hmm. through this, because that's a, that's a great question that somebody's throwing out there. It is. It is a good question. Yeah. This is David Palmer in Blanding, Utah. Um, hey. Hey, David. Uh, just a quick thing that really excited me to hear when you said that we're going to have the same um, person do our inspections each time. Mm -hmm. that was probably one of the, the biggest issues we'd had. We spend all kinds of time trying to get what the one wanted when the next person would come, which was sometimes even a week later with no times to implement the, the previous um, report that we would finally get like the day before. And just so they can get their amount of um, uh, inspections in in the season. So from the direction you're taking, this isn't really a question. It's more of a, a compliment, I guess. It's, it's this needed to happen for a long time. So I'm looking forward to it. Well, yes, thank you, David. Thanks for that feedback. I mean, that is exactly what we were hearing from some of our members is that um, they were inconsistent. People had their own agendas. Um, you had one person who had, you know, two years of experience, another person who had 20 years of experience um, and you were getting a report and then a week later, they were coming back and saying, what have you done with this report when you didn't have any time to implement? Um, and so thank you. Thank you for that, because that is exactly where we're going with this. Um, and that really speaks into where we're looking at here with our increased accountability is that, you know, we want to make sure that after we've had this virtual meeting, that we give you a specific action plan and a specific timeline in order to get these, these specific things taken care of. So if it's a MAC critical or a lifeguard skills critical thing that, that was found deficient in your report, you know, we want that corrected within two weeks. Um, and with a lifeguard skills critical, for example, we want you to film and take a video of that same lifeguard performing that exact same skill. So say Mike comes in and Mike didn't do too well on his active rescue. And I want you to work with Mike, you know, run him through his skill checks and then film Mike again, performing an active rescue. So we can make sure that Mike is getting taken care of. Um, a lifeguard skills non-critical, this is something that we've like done within a month. Um, and that's something that you can then cover in an in-service training. You know, you can pull topics together, you can train on that thing for a whole month to get your guard up to the standard. Um, and then our MAC non-critical skills, we want those done you know, just by our next site visit. By the next time we're there on site with you, you know, we want to see those MAC non-critical skills taken care of. Now, Mike, can I just clarify on these things? That's that's when we'll be, uh, um, you know, want to want to close out the loop on these critical items. But the reality is, is people will want to get on those as soon as they possibly can, because that's something that the health department showed up that day, they would be shut down. And so. Yes, yes, that's exactly correct. Yes. And the good news is that folks will be able to upload their videos. Mike's got that all set up so that that can happen easily. And this should really be a very consistent, simple process to go through to, to get mm -hmm. back on track. And now you That's right. Up, Steve, there was a question about that. Will the documents that we upload um, to you be done as an attachment to an email or is there a portal, something like that? So, yeah, great question. 
Um, so as far as the documents that, that you would send over to me, you'll upload them to, we have, we have a Dropbox server that, that you'll have a um, specific access for your facility that I will send you a link for. You'll just click that link and you'll upload them right directly in there. They come right to our box here and then you're done with it. And it'll be really nice. I'll confirm that I've received them um, and you'll be, you'll be good to go. It's very, very easy for you to use. Um, very, very simple. And all your records will be in there historically as well, which is super helpful. Yes. Um, so just to, I mean, that was a great question that was asked before about how many times a facility can fail um, and things like that before, you know, and that's where we get into here with our increased accountability more because we want to make sure that not only that you guys are accountable to us, but we're accountable to you as well. Um, that we're following up with you, that we're doing what we're supposed to do in order to help make you as safe as can be. Because um, that's what that's really what this is all about, right? Is mutual respect and, and, a, and a mutual um, relationship where we're both helping each other. And so with this increased accountability, what we're going to do is, you know, so the first time that if we have a, a deadline missed or something didn't get fixed like it was supposed to, um, if, if for the first time it's missed, what we're going to do is we're going to get back in touch with that aquatic contact, give them that exact same timeline. Maybe something happened. Maybe they got busy. You know, we understand things like this. things happen, right? Um, and we're going to give you the same timeline to correct that deficiency. The second time, if for some reason it still is not taken care of, we're going to contact that aquatic contact's immediate supervisor. So think a park and rec director or a city manager or whomever that person would, would directly report to and give them all the previous information, telling them, you know, first time, this is what happened. We gave them these timelines. You know, we're going to give them that exact same information. So then there's more accountability now um, on the member side. And the third time, if something happens, we're going to send back to, to that highest level of contact within the city, you know, city manager, the mayor, whomever, noting to them all, the, all of the previous information that we've done before, how many times we've been, um, the, the prescriptions that we've given, um, because ultimately we want this to be a part of your program, right? As, as being a member of the trust, this is, this is part of your membership. Um, it's participation in this program and being accountable for your lifeguards and your staff members. Um, and so we're, we're, we're really expecting that of you guys, but we're here to guide. We're here to help. We're here to do um, whatever we can to make sure that you're successful. That's what this is all about. It's not about, you know, us watching you and, and auditing. So we're not auditing. We're helping, right? This is all about education um, and whatever we can do to make your pool and your community as safe as can be. Um, so... I Alan, did that answer your question, Alan? Alan Walker from Linden was the one who had that question, and I just oh, want yeah. to make sure that his question was answered. Yes, yeah, so that sounds great. It looks yeah. really good. Thank great. you. And, and, and as you can appreciate, look, as a, as a pool, I mean, we're all in this together, and we want to make sure that everyone uh, in our 560 membership recognizes that that we work with our members to make sure that we're increasing the, the uh, quality of the risks that we take on. The, the, you know, we don't have a lot of frequency around pool accidents, but let me tell you when the severity there, it's just an area where the severity is enormous and, uh, and also involve all sorts of very tragic situations above and beyond the money is the, the people involved and, and lives that it impacts. And so this is something that we take super seriously and we're anxious to work with you hand in glove to make this happen. Yes, for sure. Um, so Question was asked about our, our um, how many visits, how many times we'll be there. Here you go. Um, so our, our tier one facilities, those are our facilities who are indoors with an outdoor component to them. Um, so you will get three yearly on-site visits. Our tier twos, so those are indoor facilities only, or your larger outdoor facility, you will get two yearly on-site visits for your, the indoor facility. And for if you're just an outdoor pool, um, you'll get one on-site visit. And if you're just an outdoor only facility, same thing, one yearly on-site visit. So our tier one pools. So this is, this is who our tier, tier one facilities are. Cottonwood Heights, Parks and Recreation, um, Lehigh, Moab, Price, Roy, Roosevelt, Springville, and St. George. Um, 
So you are the ones who will be receiving our three visits throughout the year. And I'll get to that here in just a minute. Our tier two members, uh, Garden City, Gunnison, Linden, Logan, Monticello, Mount Pleasant, Pleasant Grove, Richfield, Tooele City, Tooele County, uh, Uinta Rec District, and Washington City. So those are those who are indoor pools who will be receiving two visits a year or your large outdoor facility. And our tier three members um, who will be receiving one visit every year, one on-site visit from us. That's Blanding, Duchesne, Helper, Hurricane, Manti, Milford, Minersville, Nephi, Orderville, Parowan, and the Stansbury Service Agency, um, as well as Salina. And so um, that is the, the different visits you'll get. And then here, if you can look here on the screen are who your dedicated professionals are, who your dedicated um, folks are who will be out to do your visits. So if you, so for myself, um, Conwood Heights, Lehigh and Springville, um, I will be doing your visits for your outdoor facilities in the summertime. And then Linden, Nephi, Payson and Pleasant Grove. Doug has Blanding as well as Cottonwood Heights, your indoor at the indoor facility um, for those two visits. And then Duchesne, Helper, Monticello, Moab, Price, Roosevelt, and Uinta. Brent is gonna be all over the state. <laughs> and Brent has Gunnison and Hurricane and Lehigh at the indoor um, facility. Manti, Milford, Minersville, P Mount Pleasant, Orderville, Parowan, Richfield, Salina, Springville's indoor facility. Um, St. George, both your indoor and outdoor facilities, and Washington. And then Jason will be doing Garden City. Logan, Roy, both of your outdoor and indoor facilities. Uh, Stansbury, uh, Tooele City, and Tooele County. Um, and so the way that these visits and how they will come for you, um, you know, for the month, from January, to January through April, if you're an indoor facility, that's when you'll have one of your visits, right? Anytime between January and April, we'll have one of your visits here. Um, in June is when we're gonna try and hit every single member facility, whether you're an indoor or an outdoor facility. If you're an indoor facility with an outdoor component, so one of those tier two, tier one facilities, um, this outdoor, or this visit in June in the summertime will just be for your outdoor component. Okay, we're not gonna look at your indoor component at this visit in June. It will just be for your outdoor component of your facility. Um, so for example, at Cottonwood Heights, we're not gonna go in, inside and look at the indoor pools. We're just gonna go in and do our evaluation at the outdoor facility. Um, same thing with like Lehigh and Moab and, and such. <clears throat> um, and then your third visit will it be any time between September and December. So anytime between September and December for that third visit for your tier ones, for our tier two facilities. So you have only an indoor component. Um, your one visit will be anytime between January and April. Your second visit then will be anytime between September and December. Um, if you're an outdoor facility only, you will have one visit anytime in June. That's, that's what we're going to attempt and try and do for you is to have all pools have a skill value, have our visit done for you in June. Now we may not get to everyone in June, that's our hope, but if we're not able to, we'll bleed a little bit into July. Um, but you see out here on the screen, we're not visiting anybody in May, which is really nice because we know that May is a crazy time for you in your facilities. Um, if you have an outdoor facility, you're getting everything ready for your outdoor season. If you have an indoor facility with an outdoor component, you're getting that outdoor facility ready. If you're just an indoor only facility, May is still crazy because you're getting ready for summer. You're getting things ready for your summer programming. And so in May, we're not gonna do any kind of visits for you. Um, just January through April, and then June through, you know, June and July, and then September through December. One visit anytime, during those time periods. You'll like also a question, see here, question from Alan Walker, are these surprise visits or scheduled visits? They will be scheduled. So Alan, they'll be scheduled with you um, as the aquatic director. 
We want you guys to know we're coming. Um, we don't necessarily want your staff to know we're coming, obviously, um, right? But we want you guys to know that we're coming. And that is for, for a good reason, because we want you to have you, we want to, you to be able to be staffed up, right? For when we come. Because when we do a lifeguard skills check, we need a certain amount of lifeguards in order to make it work for you. Um, and so, so we want to schedule that with you. So we, so you guys know exactly how many guards you have to have available for us. And we're really flexible with, with what we can do. I mean, we can do our Mac walkthrough. When we do our Mac walkthrough, we don't really need a lot. We walk through, we do what we need to do. Um, we do need access to your pump room. Um, we do need access to, to look at your chemical records. We will have you do a chemical test on site um, when we do a Mac walkthrough. But we can do the Mac walkthrough first or we can do the Mac walkthrough after the lifeguard skills check. You know, it's whatever is, is working for you and your staff. Um, so on our skill evaluations, we need at least four lifeguards present that are available to do a skills evaluation. Um, and if that's like at the, at the beginning of a shift, at the end of a shift, um, you know, uh, whatever it is, we, we're going to need four lifeguards present in order for us to complete the skill evaluation. What we don't want to have happen is, is we've scheduled the time with you and then we show up and you have your minimum amount of staff members there to just get you through your rotations. Um, we need that extra staff there because we don't wanna shut portions of your, of your facility down. Um, so we will schedule these with you in advance so you can be sure you have those guards present. We're not gonna need those guards for more than maybe 20 minutes because um, our skill evaluations go very quickly um, because there's no, feedback given, there's nothing that goes through like that. All it is, is our guys are on site. We take a video of, of your lifeguards performing the skill. We're gonna tell them the scenario that they're gonna do. And we're gonna say, go. We record them doing that skill. Once they're done, we stop our video and we move on to the next skill evaluation. So it's very easy, it's very quick. Um, and there's no feedback given right then. The feedback is given after we get the video back, after I'm able to review it and watch it and make and look at this and give the scores and grades because that ensures our consistency, right? It's coming back to one person, me, to review everything and to make sure that all of the skills are being done accordingly and that we're consistent with our scoring and our grading criteria. Mike, Josh has a question on the lifeguard skills. Josh, go ahead and open your mic. Yeah, thank you. Uh, so I know that previously Red Cross, their preference was to do skill testing during, you know, when you have public hours going. Mm -hmm. Is there going to be a preference on that or, uh, you know, regular public hours versus uh, having lifeguards being tested during non-public hours? Just kind of curious on that. Yeah, thanks, Josh. Um, no, there, there's no preference. I mean, if you want to, if, if, if we're there during your, your open swim hours, that's great. If, if we're coming during a lap swim time, that's great because it doesn't matter when we come. Um, it's just that we have the, the requisite amount of guards available to us that we're able to do these lifeguard skills checks. Um, as far as I, I know, it's like the Red Cross program. They did a lot of it was like secret camera videoing. Um, of your lifeguard sitting on the stand and such like that. We're not going to do that. We're not going to do a lot of that. Um, when we come on site during our Mac walkthrough, we'll be able to, to note on our sheet because there's places on there about lifeguards adequately supervising the facility. We'll be able to mark and take pictures and things to that effect of, of a lifeguard and their ability to scan and watch their water. We'll be able to do that there, but we don't necessarily need to come on an open swim time. Um, we can come when it's convenient for you, um, when it's convenient for, for our loss prevention officers to come out and, and perform your skills check. Mike, Sean Guzman from St. George has a question. Sean, if you'd open your mic. Yes, my question is regarding the recording. So in all of our, our many testing that we do across all of our departments, including our energy services and our wastewater treatment facilities and everything in between, police and fire, we don't record any of the actual tests that are performed. 
So I, I do have a concern about the recording of it, the creating of a document that is then um, available for uh, uh, future litigation purposes or for grandma related purposes. I'm just wondering um, if that is something that we could discuss. Sure, Sean, that is. Um, and I appreciate your comment there and, and we can certainly discuss that. All right. And I would just say that um, probably the other um, members here should have that uh, same concern as well. So everything else is observed and then um, scored, of course. And we do have uh, documents, paper documents, and, and that we scan or, or um, computer uh, files that have those scores in it. But we, have up to this point, have not recorded. So thank you. Thanks, Sean. No, thanks, Sean. Thank you. <clears throat> any other questions? Uh, yeah, any, any other, other questions, questions out there? Any? Feel free to open your mic if you've got a question and throw it out to the group. Okay, go ahead, Mike. Okay, so yeah, as as um, as I said, and we're going to, as far as scheduling, we'll get in contact with you with the aquatic site or the the aquatic director, the aquatic manager whomever to get this scheduled. Um, make sure you're staffed so you have at least four lifeguards present. Um, and every when we come, like, like I said before, we're not gonna spend more than an hour and a half to two hours at your facility. We'll need those lifeguards for maybe 20 minutes as we do our skill checks. Um, but then, you know, they're free to go or get jump back into rotation, you know, whatever you guys need them to do. Um, but every time we come, we are going to perform two skill checks for you. Um, it'll just be at random. So we're not gonna tell you beforehand what those skills will be, um, but it'll just be a random selection from any of those different, you know, five different skill checks that we have, um, you know, and we'll just have you pick a number or something like that to, to determine what that, what that skill check is going to look like for you. Um, so during the onsite visit, like I said, Mac walked through about an hour to an hour and a half. Skill evaluation, really no more than 30 minutes. Um, and that is going to remember that is going to lead us to have a really good, robust program here. Because as you, as you recall, like with the Red Cross program, they were really heavy on the skills evaluation and looking at those things. And here, they didn't look at like your back of the house stuff, your Mac stuff, your pool deck, your, your railings on your pool, um, the electrical outlets. That's where our partners here in the loss prevention department really shine. They have a lot of excellent, excellent experience in that area. They're going to do a lot of really good work for you um, in, in this MAC walkthrough. So we're really excited to, to get their feedback and their evaluations on, on each of your facilities for this. Um, and just also, always please, please remember, this is all about education, this whole thing. It's all about just being and working together. Um, so when we come, please have available um, please have available your certifications. And that means your certifications for the lifeguards that are actually working when we come. That's all we're gonna wanna look at, right? So you have six lifeguards working, have those six lifeguard certifications available that we can just see. And just say, show me the six lifeguards that are here on your, that are working, that are in chair right now. Show me their certifications. That's what we wanna see. Um, we're going to want to see your checklist for that day. So your daily checklist, um, as well as like your chemical checklist. And we are going to want to make sure that you're taking, um, we will want to have you do a chemical reading right then when we're there. Um, and also have your emergency action plan, of course, available for us to see too. Mike, can you just comment on what they can expect in terms of turnaround time on reports and uh, follow up? Absolutely. Thanks. Absolutely. Yeah. So like I mentioned before, um, Jason or Doug or Brent or myself, once we come out and complete a report uh, at, at your facility, our commitment to you or my commitment to you is getting that report back to the back in the aquatic supervisor's hand within one week. Terrific. Thank you. So I will review and get it back with you and have that virtual meeting, like I said, scheduled so we can go through it together. Um, like I said, lifeguard skills and evaluations, they're random. We'll evaluate and then we come up with an action plan like we, like we did before, like I was showing you before. Okay, 
So this here, this is an example of a report that you will get at the end of each year that's going to show how you are doing, how you did that year, and how you compare to the rest of the, the trust membership. Um, it's going to show each of the different compliance audits that we've gone through, our, our MAC audits. It'll show each of your skill checks that we've done. It'll give you a, a final total score, and you're going to see how you track relative to the average member in the trust. Um, which is going to be really neat for you to see and observe, to see how well you're doing, how you're tracking, how, you know, where you went with each of your different skill checks. Did you go up? Did you go down? Um, did you get better? What did you do to get better? How did you implement things? This gives us a way to kind of quantify this data and look at it together and see in areas where we can keep improving and keep making a difference in your facilities and in your communities. As part of this, we are going to have, a, have an incentive program for you. Um, we're still working out the finer details of that, but no, there is going to be an incentive. Um, we want you to, to be proud of this, be proud of the program, be proud of the progress you're making. Um, and be, you know, show off, show off your facilities, show off what your lifeguards are able to do. Show off you, your, you know, what your aquatic directors have done and are working towards. Um, it's going to be something that's going to be very nice for you at your facility to display. So your community, when they come in, they can see what steps you as professionals are taking to make them safer. So we're really excited about that opportunity for you as well. Um, so just in summary, these are our five goals, right? To ensure the MAC, uh, ensure MAC compliance, ensuring consistency between everybody, between us as the, us as the trust coming out to you. Um, to increase the aquatic safety for all of our members, um, to increase the lifeguard skills and abilities for your staff, and lastly, to increase accountability for members and for the trust. Um, and with that, I'd like to um, open it up for questions, if I could. If there's any questions, go ahead and you can type it in the chat, or you can open your mic and ask a question. Love to chat with you. You know, I like to talk. So um, if you have anything, please, please ask. Yeah, Mike, as we're waiting for questions to come in, just uh, just to point out on there, for Garden City's sake, that was a sample report, right? <laughs> that was a sample report, yes. You saw Rich is doing a good job up there in Garden City, though, so. <laughs> yeah. I got to stand up for my peeps in Garden City, so. All right. Mike, uh, while people are thinking about questions, I, I've got one that you may be able to uh, just share an answer to for everybody, and that is, Talk a little bit about what the plan is with regard to additional training, webinars, things of that nature that you're going to be um, conducting throughout the year in addition to the site visit. You know, some are asking about the one site visit. What else will happen during the year in addition to that that will be helpful to them? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so what we're what I'm planning on doing with this with this program, right, is, is it will be a, a year-round thing. We want it to be interactive for you. So we want to hold, you know, like summits, like a, like a trust aquatic summit or something, um, you know, maybe once a quarter where we bring everyone together, we cover a topic that is, that is useful to you. We look at the data from these reports that we're getting back. So maybe we see like in documentation, for example, we're seeing in our reports as they're coming back, there's some questions on different documentation. Um, what should we have? What shouldn't we have? Um, what does good documentation look like? And maybe we bring in some experts from, from inside of the membership community who have done a really good job with this and say, would you be willing to talk about some? You know, let's share some ideas together. I know we do some of that, or some of you are, are a part of those communities and URPA and things like that, but being able to bring that in-house here in the trust where we know everybody here and everyone is really playing on the same playing field, um, that'll mean a lot to us as, as members in bringing that together. Um, and then as was mentioned before, if you find yourself in need of, of additional training, you want, you want another site visit, you want more things um, added on with this program, for, um, please mention it to me, mention it to your, your dedicated professional that you have coming out to you, to Jason, to Brent, or to Doug, and we're more than happy to, to see what we can do to accommodate you. But I think having having like a, like a quarterly summit, a trust aquatic summit, where we talk about what we're finding in our reports, our common, common findings, um, bringing that together 
and letting you see where everybody else is, the different questions they've had, and then how we can all continue to build. All right. Well, I don't see any more questions there. We got a, a nice comment from Sean. I'm uh, looking forward to working with, pro, with us in the program. Um, anyway, we'll open it up one more time just for any last questions. And, uh, and also anybody, um, Steve, Mike, uh, Brent and Doug, if you've got anything more to add before we have Mike give his final word. One, two, three. <laughs> <laughs> again, again, I would just like to express appreciation to uh, all of those on this call. I know you're busy and uh, we appreciate the partnership that we enjoy and, and really working together to keep our community safe is what we're about and appreciate your efforts in making good government better. We look forward to working with you. Thank you so much for your partnership. All right, awesome. I'm, uh, I'm surprised no one has asked, when is this gonna start? Nobody asked that. And I wanted to see if somebody would, but. <laughs> hey Mike, when is this gonna start? This is Alan. Alan. Alan, yeah. thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> um, so we're planning to start and roll this out in June. Um, so we'll start getting in touch with you now. Um, and we'll start with our outdoor facilities here right in June, um, getting things done and set up for your, your first visit. Um, again, this program, no cost to you as a member of the trust. We're, we're taking care of everything you need. Um, all that we all that we really ask is is just your cooperation and an understanding and that you take this with a with a really open mind and we're here to help we're here to do everything that we can to to ensure that our facilities are the safest that they can be um, and that's i'm always here and available for any questions any comments any concerns that you may have um, with the program with anything that we're going to do here that that's what that's what we're all about is making it as easy as possible for you. So thank you. A couple of questions that just came in here, uh, Heath. I appreciate you helping me keep my name out of the newspaper. Thanks for making that comment too, because these are anytime we have a pool accident, they're very public, they're very tragic, and uh, and so you know we appreciate uh, the sensitivity around that. Also, another question, including iPads. I'm assuming if people or people are wondering where they're going to have an iPad if they use an iPad uh, at their facility, and that would be something you'd want to talk, of course, to your management about. We will be certainly providing the reports to you so that you'll be able to see that. But we'd recommend to anybody who can to uh, utilize all the resources that are available uh, electronically and otherwise. Yeah, that, and that's a great question. Um, so the the Mac compliance audit form that we'll be using. It's an iPad app that, that we use. Um, and, but the report that you will get will just, will, will be a PDF document um, that'll, come, that'll come directly to you. So it'll be easy, accessible to, with anything that you need. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you very much, Mike, Steve, uh, for, for this great presentation today. Um, if you have questions on this, you know Mike, and he is, he is more than available to, to answer these questions. And like he said, we'll be in touch to, to schedule your first visit. And, uh, and if you have questions, make sure you ask. Thanks so much, folks, for, uh, for tuning into this. We are recording this session, and we'll put it up on our, on our YouTube channel. Remember to subscribe, and, uh, and so you can go back and look at that with your team. Thanks, everybody. Have a safe day. Thanks, everybody.